All right, so I'm really excited about this week's lesson because I know this is going to be a breakthrough for a lot of you. Any of you that have struggled with playing a melodic sounding lead or just improvising in a more meaningful way, sometimes it feels like you're just playing scales and it's boring and like, how do you make it sound good? Well, that's what this lesson is all about. And we're going to look at a very simple two-step process. It's super easy to follow. And it, step one is where we, we play the arpeggio. I'll explain what that is. And then step two is we play the major scale. And we go back and forth between arpeggio and major scale. It's a very simple formula that I've used for years, and I can't believe it's taken me this long to put this into a video. But uh, you're going to like this. So I've got a country song that we're going to learn. That's what, how we're going to practice all of this. Here's what that song's going to sound like, and you're going to be able to play this by the end of this lesson. All right, so my name is Brian, and this is Active Melody, where we do lessons like this every week. In-depth lessons, we go really under the hood, and we try and uh, I try and break down everything so that it all makes sense. So you're not just left memorizing something that doesn't mean anything. You're actually learning something that you can use and apply to your own playing. That's really the goal of all of these lessons. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to look at that two-step process, what that is, and then I'll show you how to play the first half of the solo. If you'd like to learn the second half of the solo, download the tablature, download the MP3 jam tracks, download the PDF handouts of the arpeggios. You can get all of that lesson material by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP382. Okay, let me just mention tone real quick before we get into this because somebody's going to ask. I'm playing just straight through an app. I'm using the Little Walter. This is called the Little Walter uh, King Arthur. Uh, this is a, They're made by a guy named Phil Bradbury in North Carolina. Really cool guy. Custom build. He'll custom build the cabinets and everything. I have no affiliation with him. I paid for this. No affiliation with Little Walter. I just wanted to mention it because I always somebody will ask. Uh, so I'm playing just straight through the amp. Um, no, Well, there is a pedal, which is this guy. So the amp does not have reverb in it, and so I'm using a uh, Big Sky, which is made by Strymon. So that's the Strymon Big Sky for reverb. And everything is running off camera. As you can see, I've got the cables kind of going right here. Those go off camera to the Universal Audio Aux, which is my interface that goes into my computer. And so that's how it all works. Um, so let's talk about arpeggios. We're gonna connect them back to chord shapes. And so that's going to be the real key to this whole thing is not just memorizing these notes at random, but you have to connect them to these chord shapes so that you can pull them out anytime you want to use them. And so we're going to be looking at two chord shapes, the A shape and then the E shape. And those are the chords out of the caged system, C-A-G-E-D. I have a lesson on that if you don't know what I'm talking about, EP273. You can go back and, re and review that if you need to. But we're going to look at this A shape, and an arpeggio just means broken chord. It's just the notes out of a chord. That's all it is. I used to think an arpeggio is like when you sweep and do all this kind of metal stuff, because I always associated it with, like, shredding. Uh, but it's not. It can be played very slowly. And when you play a chord, you're playing uh, notes all together, all in unison. The one, the three, and the five out of the major scale. That's a major chord. If you look at the major scale, you play the one, the three, the five. That's your major chord. Well, if I, instead of me playing them in unison, if I played them individually like that, that's an arpeggio. So let's learn that arpeggio I just played. That's a D arpeggio, D major. And we're gonna tie it back to this chord shape, which is the A shape. So if I just play the notes out of that A chord, 
that's the arpeggio minus one note. The only note I, I didn't play there was this note. Actually, I did play it, I just I, I need to include this one as well. So this is the F sharp. So there's three notes in a D chord. You have a D, an F sharp, and an A. And so there's our D note, which would be fifth fret, fifth string. Then we come down here. It's like, I think of this as like a little appendage off of that chord shape. So that's fourth fret, fourth string. And then, now we're back into the chord shapes. There's your arpeggio. Let's do it again. Let's just play it an octave higher. So now we're going to bar and play uh, seventh fret, strings three, two, and, and then one. So all together. And then to cap it off, I came up here and played the D note up here on the tenth fret, first string. So that is the, your D arpeggio, your D major arpeggio, using the A chord shape. So now when I'm playing that shape, if I'm playing a C chord, for example, I can very quickly go into that C arpeggio. So now, here's what's cool. We can take basically the same idea and use it over the E shape. So now let's play uh, an A chord. So we're going to play an A arpeggio, but we're going to play it over the E chord shape. Right? These three fingers are making up your E chord in first position. That's why it's called the E shape. So look at this. You can see what's going on there is it looks exactly the same as what we did over the A shape. This, there's that little appendage, right? And then we're going to come back into the chord, play the notes of the chord. So it's exactly the same notes as the A bar chord. But we just add in that extra note. That is the A arpeggio using the E chord shape. And so it's really a combination now of those two shapes that allow you to play arpeggios anywhere. If you can play the E shape and then the A shape, that's how I pretty much always approach arpeggios. Obviously you can tie them to the other shapes from the cage system like the C shape or the D shape and so forth. But for me, I've always just kind of rooted myself around the E shape or the A shape for an arpeggio. All right, so if you're a premium member, you have access to the handout, which is a PDF file that has this outlined, what we just went over. So you can print that off or pull it up on your screen or whatever and use that as a practice. One really good way to practice this, just so you can start to get the notes into your head, is to take the jam track and play along with the jam track. It's just three chords, a D chord, an A chord, and a G chord, and play those arpeggios over those chords. So you're kind of going... Kind of like this, right? And then you go switch chords. That's a really good way to practice it and just kind of ha has something that has a tempo. So you might think about doing that. Now let me just add one other variable to this equation, what we've learned so far. So we've got the major arpeggio. Now we're going to learn a seven arpeggio, the dominant seven arpeggio. And that think of like your chords. You have your major chord, like a D chord, and then you have a D7 chord, right? Now we're going to learn the D7 arpeggio. That's all I mean by that. What's nice is it's the same notes we already know. So we have the D, the F sharp, and the A. This would be playing the D arpeggio. We're going to turn this into a D7 arpeggio by adding that 7 interval. It's actually the flat 7. So that's a C note. So if you throw in a C into a D chord, it turns it into a D7, which is that nice bluesy chord. And the arpeggio sounds bluesy as well. So that's all a dominant 7 arpeggio is. It's the same as the major arpeggio. You just add that extra note. And that would be the note if you were to play a D7 chord, which would be your C note that turns it into the 7. But you really need to learn those two arpeggios, the major and then the 7. And learn them in two... Uh, shapes. So learn them over the E shape and the A shape. And once you can do that, you've really opened up a whole new set of variables for you to use when you're improvising to create that melodic sounding solo that you're looking for. All right, so that's a look at arpeggios. Hopefully that makes sense. We're now going to switch gears and we're going to talk about the major scale. And, and then we're going to talk about how we mix the major scale with arpeggios to play these solos. But the major scale is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Solo, Tito. I know you know what that is by ear. You could probably work it out 
uh, just by ear, but you need to know how to play your major scale. And we're gonna be playing it only in one position for this lead, so that makes this very easy. Uh, we're gonna be playing it right here. If you wanna know how to play it all over the neck, however, in all the different positions, check out EP374. In that lesson, I go through that with practice material and all of that. But anyway, we're gonna be looking at it here. So this is the D major arpeggio, and I'm connecting this to the D chord using the G shape out of cage, which would look like that. So let's play it from here. We're gonna put your pinky on the 10th fret first string, 9th fret, 7th fret. That's first string. Ninth, or 10th fret second string, 8th fret 2nd string, 7th fret 2nd string, 9, 7 on the 3rd string. So all together. Now that is obviously the D major scale, but let's connect it to something. You can either connect it to your A chord shape, if that makes it easier for you. So you could just, wherever your pinky is or your ring finger when you're playing that chord, you can come to that root note there and play it off of that or you can use the G shape out of caged and play it off of that. However you want to connect it, uh, you know, whatever shape is easier for you to connect it to, but just know that major scale. Now, if you have that major scale, which is just seven notes, and then you've got your arpeggio, you've got everything you need to be able to do this. All right, so let's relate all of this to painting a picture on a canvas. If I told you to paint a picture of a horse, uh, the, the easiest way to do that would be to do a rough sketch on the canvas, like in pencil or one solid color, just so you get compositionally sort of where everything goes. And then once you had that, you would uh, take your palette and you would paint that in. Well, to me, that rough sketch is what the arpeggio is. It's just an outline of the chord. So that's why it works so well, because you're literally playing the chord. You're just playing it in, in pieces. And then the scale, the major scale, that's your colorful palette. And so it's a combination of those two things where you go in and you do a rough sketch and then you, you know, color it in that give you that real pretty, uh, meaningful sounding lead. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. It's sort of like, almost like a call and response. So when I played this lead, I played. So we're gonna break that down, but let's look at what's going on there. That's just your D arpeggio, right? So there's seventh fret, strings three and two, fifth fret, string one. It's just your D chord. And then I came up to the D note up here. So that would be the 10th fret, first string. And that's the top part of the arpeggio. There it is, I can't play it. Okay, so. We came up to this note, and then I came down to the ninth fret first string. Now what's going on there? Well, when I came down to this note, I came into the major scale. This is where the light bulbs are gonna go off for you. Because look at what's going on here. D arpeggio, and then D major scale, look. So any of these notes in that major scale are gonna sound good. Ah, so what that means is I can go back and forth between the arpeggio and the major scale. And that's the magic of this. So, that would be the ninth fret first string. So that's a little hammer-on pull-off hammer-on between the ninth fret and the seventh fret on the first string. There's a hammer on pull off. And then we come down to the 10th fret second string. And then down to the seventh fret second string. Look at the notes though. They're all in the major scale, the D major scale. And then watch this. Listen to that. Doesn't that sound good? That's because that's your D chord. I just played the notes right out of the chord, which is back into the arpeggio. So hopefully you can see what's going on here. We started off on the arpeggio, we switched into the major scale, and then I kind of ended that phrase in the arpeggio. Let's play along with the slow version of the jam track just so you can hear that in context. One, two, three, two.
All right, so then I came up here and went. Let's look at that. So this is going right back up the D chord, right in, still in the arpeggio. And then I came to the eighth fret second string and did a full bend. And what that note is, is I'm bending up to, to here. So I'm back in the major scale here. And when you're in the major scale, you can bend this note because you're bending up to this note, which is in the scale, right? And then, so I did that. And then I went and did a half bend. So that was a full bend on the eighth fret uh, second string. And then I go to the seventh fret second string and do a half bend to bend into that note that I started with. And then I came down to the ninth fret third string. So all together. And then seventh fret third string. And then I came down, and that's where the song switches. We go to the A chord. And it's actually an A7. And I went. Listen to that. So I came down to here. So you gotta ask yourself, what is this? Why did that note work? It sounds good, but why? Well, the reason is your A arpeggio. Right? That would be the third interval in your A scale, A major scale, but that's just one of the notes in the in the chord right there. So I went. Um, And I did a half bend up to this note. Then I came up here to the uh, eighth fret second string and hit that note along with the sixth fret third string. And why why do the, why do those work? I think your A7 chord. So that's what, again. I was just picturing the arpeggio there. I could see that note. And I just played those two together and worked that into the solo. So you can start, you see, you can see that what's happening here is you're really starting to think more like a rhythm player. You're just picturing the chords. And you, even though you're playing single notes like that, in, in a way you're sort of playing rhythm because you're, you're, you're really playing the chords, uh, just playing them through arpeggios. So then the song goes to this A chord and I played Now it sounds like a lot, but you're gonna see that it's actually very simple once we break this down. So I started with the A arpeggio. We started down here, and I went like this. So that's the first four notes. One, two, three, four. We're gonna learn that. That's uh, the bottom of the arpeggio. I'm just walking up literally from the bottom of it. So it's the fifth fret, fifth, fifth fret, sixth string, uh, fourth fret, fifth string, seventh fret, fifth string. And then I came up here, while I hit that 7th fret 5th string, I played the 7th fret 4th string. So I just kind of barred that with my ring finger. And then watch this. So that would be the 6th uh, fret 3rd string, 5th fret 2nd string. So it's like... So the timing goes... Triple it. So there's an 8th there's an note there. And then a triple it. And then I went and came back into the major scale. So now I'm at the uh, eighth fret second string, seventh fret first string, and then I slide that up two frets and play the uh, tenth fret second string, ninth fret first string. So. Let me do that slowly. Hopefully you can see that that's in the major scale. These notes and these notes. And then I went. So that's, while I'm holding that down, I've got my middle finger and my ring finger up here. I put my pinky down on the 10th fret first string and then played the first string uh, behind the 9th fret and then the 10th fret second string. And then I did this thing that goes Again, just the D major scale. So, 9, 7 on the first string. That would be 10, 8, 7 on the second string. And then we repeat that and came down to the 9th fret 3rd string.
So all together, that last run. And again, it's just, it's just the D major scale. Now what's really cool about it, and this will be uh, another light bulb moment for a lot of you, I covered this back in that EP374, uh, that lesson that was the mode lesson part one. Uh, but what's going on here, if I stay in the D major scale, even though the song might be playing over, there might be an A chord or at some point there's a G chord, as long as I play the D major scale, it really doesn't matter what the chord is. Because while I'm playing a D major scale over an A chord, I'm actually playing an I'm playing an A mixolydian. And when the song goes to a G and I play a D scale, I'm playing in G lydian mode. That may be confusing to some of you and I don't want to get too far off the track, but check out EP374 if you want more information on what I just mentioned there. It's a, it's a modal thing. But it makes it nice when you're playing a 1-4-5 if you just stay in the major scale of the key of the song. So in this case, just stay in the D major scale. That's all you have to worry about. If you work in the arpeggios with it, then you've got a really meaningful sounding lead. If I just stayed and played the major scale, that would have worked, but it wouldn't have sounded as pretty as some of the, some of those little targeted things that's happening. All right, let's back up with a slow version of the jam track and play everything up to this point. One, two, three, two. All right, so up to this point, the song has gone from the one chord, which is the D, to the five chord, which is the A. We're still on the five chord, playing over the A, and I played, and this last little phrase here, I went. And then it goes, right there, it goes back to the D. So. Let's look at that. We're on the fifth fret, second string, seventh fret, second string, half bend, it's not a full bend there. So all I'm doing is I'm targeting that note, which is in your A7 chord, or A7 arpeggio. Then I'm coming down, I'm just playing the A7 arpeggio here, seventh fret, third string, and then that would be the A dominant seven arpeggio. So I'm doing a hammer-on here between the, uh, I'm actually barring the first three strings on the fifth fret, playing strings two and three, hammering onto the sixth fret, third string, seventh fret, fourth string, fifth fret, fourth string. And then I went, now that's chromatic. So you can do that too. That's another little level of this, but instead of just playing the notes in, in the scale or in the arpeggio, you can fill in the notes in between. That's called playing chromatically. You don't want to do a lot of it, but in certain cases, like right there, then I come down to this note, which would be the fourth fret, fourth string, and that last note would be the seventh fret, third string. Now, what is this note? That's in the D, that's where the song switched back to the D. You can hear it. You can hear it going from the A to the D, right? Now, why did that work? Well, think of our D arpeggio. There's that note. And in a way, I was just thinking, what's the nearest note in the D arpeggio? Because I was here, well, it's right here. It's right next door, next door neighbor, right? And then I hit that, which is the uh, seventh fret, third string. So that's the first half of this country lead. And hopefully you're starting to see what's going on here. We're playing the playing the arpeggio and mixing it with the major scale. And you and I'm just kind of going back and forth. And there's not like a hard formula like, oh, you play the, the arpeggio here, and this is the point where you play the major scale. It doesn't have to be that way. But what's nice is with the arpeggio is, if you're just playing that major scale, it's gonna work. It's gonna totally be in context. But when you jump into those arpeggios, you work those in, 
it really makes it sound even that much more thought out and meaningful because you're targeting those notes that live within the chord. And that's how it's done. So I'm going to back up and play along with the slow version of the jam track one more time and then that'll wrap up this part one video. If you'd like to join us in part two, get all the practice material, jam tracks, mp3 files, tabs, handout, PDF handouts, all that stuff. Uh, look into premium membership. Uh, you get access to obviously this lesson, but the entire back catalog, 10 years worth of lessons like this. So if you're serious about learning how to improvise, this would be a great way to do that. One, two, three, two.